telling myself, you know, this is it. You don't get a, a, a chance to, to live. And you, you've had every chance to fix this. And, and this is, this is it. What so, funny you know all Yeah. Did they sponsor you guys? Where's the brand deal? I want my shake with that brand. So Jackie has a crazy story. If I could help even one person with sharing my story, then I'll know that it, doing those things that make me uncomfortable and that I get shy and, and I'm so socially awkward and just an awkward person as it is, was worth it to put myself through a little bit of uncomfortable this to, if it even reaches one person and the fact that that first video that was actually meant for me got so much attention yeah. positively mm -hmm. um obviously i i want to be able to reach as many people as i can and let people see the, know the real stories the mm -hmm. what it's really like so some of you watching probably have seen the video that Janine put up for me. Her Jack's uh, uh, her, story yeah. of infection took her leg, I believe. Yeah, Jack's, yeah. Jackie's video has gotten a lot of views, a lot of comments. Everybody wants to know what's up with her, especially since she mentioned that we, nobody knows really what's everybody going on with her, on but she can go into um, detail. And I can go into more detail. Everybody's like, where's the detail? <laughs> <laughs> like we have lives <laughs> but now i guess um we're here gonna do that for you <laughs> and i think we're we're gonna be more dedicated to getting together once a week to do this it's good for both of us i think yes yeah, so have a, have a better upload schedule because yeah. it's horrible <clears throat> i'm jacked got clean on april 27th of 2020 so i have just under a year clean i started using technically i started using about a decade ago unfortunately i went through a lot of trauma as a child and i've been through a lot of stuff that a lot of addicts <clears throat> go through and also i have serious back issues that um doctors were prescribing me in the early 2000s tons and tons of opiates years couple years after I'm good and dependent on these medications they all these doctors start getting busted and remember when when all that happened mm -hmm. when they BK changed the, the doctors the schedules and everything Michael the, Jackson all yeah. that Anna Nicole Smith yeah yeah so I lost my insurance also started buying from the streets that led to you know eventually a uh, heroin addiction throughout that I uh what would be three years ago, I started having, noticing uh, an infection in my arms. At that point, I knew it was from using. Oh, it was even before that. It was a year, so it was about four or five years ago now, when I was working at the club. I went to the hospital because my foot, which I had never used in my foot, and my legs, nothing. My, and it was this foot, my right, the, everything actually started in my left side. My foot swelled up my ankle sprained my ankle or something it was all red and it was growing up my leg but it was just red and swollen i had cellulitis and they explained that. to me what that was from and explained to me that it would get worse if i didn't treat it and then i started having the sores on my arms and i don't know just so people see um i started i would have these uh you know kind of like me and also being an addict, I would constantly, for me, it wasn't that I wanted to try to dig at myself. It was that I thought that if I squeezed it, I could make it go away. Yeah, you know that, what I mean? Like, that was my it. thought too. Yeah, and I got a mosquito bite in my right calf. That was what started everything in my legs. Because when I realized that it wasn't just from using it was an infection, the cellulitis, so it had turned into myelitis. Uh, not it, when it was in, it, cellulitis stays in your body. Like It's always there. It's, yeah, it's active. E any cut can turn into, like I, like, yeah, things, like you know? staph can yeah. too. It's and, always on your body. Yeah, <clears throat> and so I guess I was having issue 
or a flare up and I got a mosquito bite and I already have an adverse reaction to uh, bug bites and so it started to get really bad but I was also using I was living I never I was never on the streets but I was living in a motel I was not taking care of myself at all I didn't care about myself in the slightest it started to get really bad my arms were now I had no veins, no nothing, because it was in my uh, bloodstream and in my, under my skin, I started trying to find veins in my legs. This one, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, probably. You'll probably be able to see it. Yeah. See that indent here? Yeah. So my other leg was like all of this, all of this. Was gone. was gone. It looked like a shark, like a shark's bite. That's what, that's what you're Now, doing. mind you, this is very sensitive for me because I never show stuff like this. If sharing my story can, can help even one person um, and me having to show those uncomfortable moments, uh, I, I'm going to do that. So fortunately, because I was so deep and I was in the worst part of my addiction, the worst point in my addiction. I you could. don't really believe that something that small is going to be that big. That's no. And but I also I was not taking care of myself. I didn't want to. I couldn't even get water on it without it would stink, burn. And it was the most painful thing. I can't even explain it. It was like. I think about this. Okay. It was an open wound. Okay, so when you look at those, think about that, but you're actual looking into your flesh. Yeah. Dying. It's all bad. It's all bad. And it horrible smell it, too. It, that's what, yeah, and that's, that's a thing. I, I knew that that was there. Because of that, that's when I started isolating, like completely. I would not leave that room for nothing. I would not go around anybody because I was so, and I was making it worse because instead of cleaning it and keeping it and airing it out and letting it heal properly, I was trying to hide it and conceal it. So I'd clean it and then wrap it. And those those sort of wounds you're not supposed to wrap uh -huh. because letting the, the infection get breathe, out. Breathe, yes. Right, breathe. I was only making it worse and it was spreading. Um, and because I was still using and it had gotten into my bloodstream and into my bone, which turned into osteomyelitis. That's what I which have. Is what, yeah. These are lifelong things. These are things that we will all have, have for the rest of our lives. Uh, one person out of like 200 people get osteomyelitis yeah. or some higher like that. I've only met three people my whole life that have had osteomyelitis. Yeah was the other person was it from using yeah yeah so it's from reusing needles so it's not from like not from sh you can obviously get it from sharing needles but mine, i never did that so i would definitely reuse yeah. well mine came from a urinary tract infection that backed up to my kidneys and my kidneys started producing waste and it sat in my spine and then just abscessed and I got like my whole L5 missing <laughs> and they didn't oh. put anything back because I was an addict and they were afraid if they put metal in me that uh, it would get infected and so now I'm walking around fall rest like if I fall I could break my back and it's crazy I just found this out like two weeks ago I'm tripping mm. I get my MRI on Easter Sunday mm. so <laughs> see the thing is is yours was inside and that's even scarier to me to think about because you, I could bone. see mine, okay? Yeah. But you could, mine was so bad, you could see my bone. Yeah. You could, part, I don't want to get too graphic, but it was, it was, it was that bad. But by this time, I lived for a good year with that, had weight issues, but, um, and I had definitely lost weight from, not, while I was using, but, it wasn't until that infection hit my, started attacking my entire body and my, including my, all of my organs. Um, I could eat, I could sit here and eat a large pizza, a, a tub of ice cream and 10 cinnamon rolls and lose five pounds. I was not working out. I was not, I was tiny and I was, it was literally from 
because this infection was sucking the life mm -hmm. out of me. I literally looked like I was melting. <laughs> I started getting fevers and I was sick every day, every day. I was having what felt like a uh, cotton fever. I don't know if you've ever had cotton mm -hmm. fever. Like every day, At, once a day I would go through that something like that. And I got to a point where I was, I couldn't comprehend anything and I was in and out of consciousness and I was, unfortunately, I was in a situation to where the person I was staying with was taking, there was money involved, let's just say that, mm -hmm. you know. I don't want to go too in depth on the actualities of what happened. Unfortunately, I feel like because of, of their own addiction, Fully taking they care weren't of you. caring, they didn't care, truly care about me. Right. You know? I, my life or death could have, was least of their worries, you mm -hmm. know. It was literally, I, I had been basically in a diaper. I could not get up to pee. I could not eat. I could barely take down water. In and out of consciousness, I had, was running f huge fevers. I was covered in sweat, soaked in, in sweat. Bed is soaked in sweat, but sh I would be shivering and shaking. And using person two was also, you know, making sure that I was still thinking that that was going to help me. That would take away your pain. And it was at a point where I couldn't walk, I couldn't move, I couldn't even reach my phone. I felt like I weighed, there were rocks or, or boulders holding me down. I could not move. And it hurt, everything hurt. So I had dealt with the fact that I was going to die that day. And the thing was, was I was alone. So I definitely thought, there was no one here to help me. I can't get up. I'm, and so I'm in my head, like telling myself, you know, you're, this is it. You don't, you know, you don't get a, a, a chance to, to live. And, and you, you had every chance to fix this. And, and this, is, this is it. Somehow was able to get up. I got to the door of the, the motel room, opened the door and collapsed. And so I was able to use the last ounce of strength that I had to get that couple of steps out up to the door, open it, and then I was, that was it. The person that was there had saw, had come back at that point because this person had warrants. They didn't want anybody calling the hospital or calling the, the police or 911. They had warrants. So just throw me in the backseat of the car and take me to the hospital. But once I got there, and they realized the shape I was in, they were, this, she's dying. Made them drive over to the side of the building, or the, like to the ambulance entrance. And they came out with a, a gurney and loaded me on and had, well, they were calling all sorts of, Cold. ripping my, my, <clears throat> cutting my clothes off me. And once they, when they saw my leg, they were like, <gasps> I, I don't remember, I, I had, remember like, moments but I can't really give you what those moments were mm -hmm. I only can tell you what I've been told from the doctors and from the people that were you know because the memories I have don't make any sense you know? and we have I have a photo in that video yeah. of you in that shape to where yeah. you don't know what I couldn't I, yeah, I was conscious I was on a people but, were trying to get last pictures and that's what that was yeah. like that's scary turned out that I was septic severely septic um that osteomyelitis because it was untreated i had gone to the hospital once that a year before yep. got on oral antibiotics but then once they were out i didn't do anything and it, it, it went random after, after that especially because i had exacerbated it you know i i was septic and i had a, a, a almost 106 degree fever i had a heart attack my heart was shutting down my lung. I had um, what's called a septic pulmonary emboli. That's actually what it is, it is affected blood clots. So twice each, my lungs, each lung drain was literally like, I'm not, I feel like I'm getting too graphic, but- No, you need to. They, it, they, as long they, as you're okay with it. Yeah, they, they got so much um, out of my lung fluid that, uh, and like pus. I had the osteomyelitis. My heart rate was so high um, and they had to take my, my leg 
I was also uh, going through withdrawals. I was done. Yeah. I, and I, I will tell you, I battled so hard moments where I had called the person that I was staying with uh, at the motel to have her come get me because I, I, I wanted to use. They weren't gonna give in to my BS, which is what I needed because I didn't want to use. I didn't want to for that life anymore. I was ready, you know? And so I fought it and I had no strength. I was so tired of fighting. I didn't think I was gonna, nobody thought I was gonna make it through that first night. But once I started to, and I started to come back in and out and remember, start when I was starting to remember things, I realized like I had been given another chance. I have believe in a higher power, have higher power. I don't subscribe to, you know, organized religion in any way, but um, I do believe that there is a bigger, we are here for a mm -hmm. bigger purpose, purpose and that we go through certain things for a reason. I was in the hospital for a month, exactly 30 days. I went in April 27th of 2020 and I got, May 1st I had my leg, my right leg above the knee amputated and I went home May 27th. And then I was home for a couple of weeks and then I had blood clots in my lungs and, and septic again and was dying again. I had to have um, uh, pick lines in my arms. I had one in this arm and then one in this arm from April to September. You came over, it was like, you were only oh, over yeah, there for like yeah. two hours and it was like every 10 minutes you were hooked up to something. I was just like, yeah. wow. You're just sitting there holding it up. And you're just like, that is crazy. Yeah. It was a lot. You had a lot. Yeah. And this is all during COVID, mind you. Uh, uh, you know, it during the beginning of it, when mm -hmm. everyone was like, Freaking didn't out. know what to do. And, and yeah. Stocking and, up all the toilet paper. Yeah, <laughs> I, legit. Like this was right in the beginning. All of my doctors were nurses and stuff with from different states and mm -hmm. my whole point of the whole point of me telling all of this and getting graphic is to let you got everybody know anybody that's out there so and I, I'm walking now by the way uh for since October mm -hmm. I think that movie came out that's <laughs> that movie yeah that movie about me yeah. no <laughs> when she put out the video it was like November yeah. 10th yeah. that's right that was the day yeah. the day you I got went your home. leg yeah I, and it was I, the day I, I put out that video yeah well I got my running leg the worst we're getting that built and so I'm hoping by the, the summer like by June I'd say I, I would be I'm hoping to do in that and she uh, already yesterday. did her 5k in her wheelchair yes, just so everybody knows <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> I like yesterday it went down and up, up and down. And I don't know what, how many degrees. It was 60 degrees. Yeah. I'd say at least 30 feet of elevation change over uh, 20, 25 foot forward distance. So it was, it was a sizable hill, and it's not as though it was a path that was meant to be taken either. There are trees falling, undergrowth crossed over. There's a couple Mine. times she went to step on a log and literally yeah. just disintegrated. Literally Terminator style. <laughs> <laughs> That's why all the kids love me because they think I'm part of a robot. But, yes. <laughs> but obviously I, I wish that I was further and I could do, it's it, it's a struggle. I, I am fighting every day. It is a battle every day just to survive, to live. Not go crazy. Yeah, well, it's having to learn how to do everything again, having to support myself, my entire body with my the, my core and my left leg. You know, if you if you actually do any research about amputations, they say an above the knee right leg amputation is is the hardest one. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people <clears throat> aren't able to walk with a prosthetic. Uh, um, I'm lucky enough that it's my nub is this like up, up up to here yeah you just got just above the knee just above the knee <clears throat> if it was any further up it would probably have been a problem yeah but you're so close to where your knee naturally bends that you you know it yeah. works i mean i have i don't have a knee 
you know? Yeah, so, yeah. But, but a lot of people have amputations where it's up to here. Mm -hmm. And, and they rubs. don't have anything to connect to. People that you see that are doing freaking walking on, with one leg on stilts. So they got three legs. And there's one guy that does these awesome uh, costumes. He did like uh, a very authentic Pixar robot. Take away from the fact that it is hard. You're at your worst in your addiction. If you come across this and you're using right now, just remember at some point, especially if it's hard drugs like heroin and meth and, and cocaine. Anything IV. Yeah, especially anything IV. Anything that's go gonna en end up in your bloodstream. Your bloodstream. You have to remember that at some point it is gonna infect your body it's somewhere. gonna hurt you enough to the point where you're it's gonna cause you to die in some way whether that be mentally or physically if you, you know, don't stop you know gonna say. well you know what they say you know you see you see older people that are addicted to crack but you don't see older people that are addicted to heroin and there's a reason for that right because they're not alive to tell yep. the story yeah be on the streets anymore you know yeah so. so you have to you have to realize that i was so afraid of the way i was going to be treated if i went to get help for my leg and i was so bad in my uh, addiction i was so afraid i didn't want to be sick i was mm -hmm. so afraid of being sick and them not give, giving me anything in the hospital that i let that affect me you can't do that they will help you no matter what they will help you they're not gonna let you suffer. Yes, I had to go through withdrawals. Once I knew I was at a point that they could give me the proper medications and dose me off, it helped you did me. It. You have to find, the most important thing is finding what works for you and not letting anybody else tell you how to work your recovery. As long as you don't pick up that drink or drug that day, living your life because i i'm finally to a point where i'm about to start school to to be a lawyer and i'm working for a law firm as a paralegal to get out things to a point that i you know happy not that i'm not happy but you know what i'm happy happy with, with yourself with, with everything yeah. yes I get you it. know where i'm where i'm happy with the person that i am i'm going through a lot of my mental health issues and the, when they talk about, um, you know, the flashbacks and the post-acute withdrawals and stuff like that, it's real. But if you're really trying to get clean and you're, if you really, like, you have to reach out for help doing what we're doing, having people that, that you're close to, we're going to do another video to explain this, um, uh, probably next week, but, uh, about our story together yeah. because That's it's definitely wild. a story uh because janine and i have known each other for like years yeah, like now eight years. a good almost decade i would say um but uh wasn't the greatest relationship <laughs> we'll just put it that way um but boys we'll be boys boys will be boys exactly <laughs> exactly and what that has to do with us but i guess we can end this so. yes. okay bye guys <laughs>